there are many reasons why you might want to import data from one session into another one. Maybe because you're collaborating with someone else or because you want to have an edit session or a premix session. Sometimes importing can give you a fresh perspective on a session that just seems to be getting out of hand. So here I'm just creating a new empty session, 44.1, 24-bit, and using my last I.O. setup. Now I'm going to save it to my data drive and call it Higher Edit 1. Now once I save, this session will open. Here's my empty mix window and the empty memory locations, as well as the edit window. There's the empty work area, empty track list, and the empty region list. All right, so let's import some data from another session. Now from the file menu, I'm going to choose Import and then Session Data. Use the Open and Save dialog to specify a session that has data that you want to import into this one. Now this powerful window yields a lot of options. Now in the top left are the properties for the session that you're importing, the session name, and the session start time. Now note that the timecode mapping options are maintaining absolute timecode, ensuring that your regions are placed at the same point within the timeline. Now you could choose a relative position or map to a custom value. Now the audio files or the media that's used in the source session can be either copied to the new session or just linked to the same location as the original audio files. If I locate to the session in the finder, you can see all of the media files in the audio files folder, and that's enclosed within the session folder hierarchy. Now these are the media files that our new session will point to if I choose not to copy them. Link into media will also save you from making unnecessary duplicate files to your hard drive. Applying any sort of sample rate convert will automatically copy media files because you're asking for a change of file format. Next are all of the source tracks contained within the session that you're importing, and we'll come back to that in a second. At the bottom are some important options for importing the tempo, the key signature, and indeed your memory locations. Check it out. If I check the tempo meter option, our current tempo of 120 beats per minute will be overwritten if I import only this parameter. Nice. Now you can also get to the import session data screen simply by dragging a session from the finder window to the track list, the track view area, or into the main work area, and up comes the Import Session Data dialog again, where we can import more items, such as the memory locations. Now you can see that our memory locations have populated, as well as along the marker ruler. Now if you drag a session directly into the regions list on the right-hand side of the edit window, you'll get a different dialog, specific to importing only the audio files and their corresponding regions allowing you to drag audio files or regions directly into the edit window. Of course, you don't have much information about where those files should be in context to the timeline. Now, let me just revert my session back to its original save state. That way, I can bring in the tracks that I want. Again, drag the source session into the open empty session, and now we can go ahead and select the tracks that we do want. Now notice on the destination side, Pro Tools is creating a new track to accommodate the selections that we make. Now, if we had existing tracks within this session, they would also appear on the destination side. Now, I'll just make sure that I bring in the tempo again, and then I'll choose what kind of data I want to import with these tracks. So I'm going to choose None, then click the Import Replace Existing Playlist, this will enable only the regions and media check, but I want to also import the alternate playlists as well as track comment and track colors. So now we're ready to import. Now once complete, you can see everything populate. All of the regions in the timeline, our drum tracks, the bass tracks, and the master fader. Now also note that the alternate playlists have also been imported, and this means that I have all of the alternate drum takes that were recorded with the original session. 
all of the appropriate audio files have been imported as well as the corresponding memory locations. In the mixer you can see all of the 12 drum channels, the two bass tracks and the master track. Fantastic. 